All right, guys, you want to build yourself a beautiful aeroplane? Here's my best tool for the job. Okay, so you've decided to build yourself an aeroplane. Get yourself set up, all the tools. I'll give you a quick run through what I found useful and the number one tool that if you're going to build yourself an aircraft. While you're waiting for your kit to come in, knock yourself up a bench. Now, it depends on your workspace. But I made this bench, two sheets of 2400, so 4.8, and I just cut the edges off and rounded the corners from memory. Built my shelves. If you notice, from way back at the start, it's a bench, so I called it B1, B2, etc. They're all labelled. So were all my cupboards when I first started off. So when, you, when your kit arrives, do the inventory, you know, you grab a piece, throw it on that shelf, it's on shelf B1, which worked out well for me. Wheels, you can see the aftermarket wheels I've put on down there, used to sit on the stubbies. Put everything on wheels. You're gonna, ha you're gonna have to shift it at some stage. I can push this round with one hand. So very good, so get yourself a good bench. I'm very fortunate, I guess, to have my hanger set up. But if you think, remember back, if you've been watching from the start, I started in my shed. Grinder, didn't use the grinding wheel very much at all. Um, but after building a complete Zenith, that's how much of the scotch Bright wheel I've got left for deburring. It's got a bit of a, see I favour one side. Um, but that was priceless. Uh, just deburr, sorry, you know, polish the edges on everything. Yeah, deburr to burn the edges. Just a cheap little Ryobi. I'm a middle of the road sort of guy. My bandsaw, you go through plenty of sandpaper. Um, you can bandsaw the aluminium um, just to make squares and cut your L angle. So I'd cut my L angle on the bandsaw, square it up, polish it up, good to go. Good vertical drill. I'm not saying that's a good one, but that's the old super cheap auto type one. Um, that's lasted me quite a while, just for those squaring up jobs. And I think during the build, I bought the um, Ryobi belt sander. You do wear out the uh, wear out the discs or the sandpaper pretty quick with aluminium, and that's just a leftover from my hobby days. Uh, you know, I, with scroll saw, scroll saw. That worked out really well for cutting the rubbers around the undercarriage, actually, that was good. Bits of scrap, plenty of uh, drilling guides and blocks of wood. I did keep all my, basically keep every scrap of aluminium right down, you know, right down to just tiny bits. I just hung, hang on to everything, basically. Um, just goes into a bucket there. Under the bench, just had all my Scotch Bright, um, prep wash, corrosion stuff, a bit of primer, filler, that sort of stuff worked out well. As far as the tools go, compressor for my, which went into the muffler box, just lined with foam. Just a cheap two horsepower compressor, um, mainly for the root guns. Spare batteries on charge all the time for my drills. Cruiser. Tackle box. Still quite a few odds and sods in there after the end of the build. Um, it's good to have nuts left over, isn't it? After you finish an aeroplane. So, and uh, the finishing kit. Lots of rivets. These ones must have been for the rear windows, which I went with nuts and bolts and screws. So that's what I ended up with left over. Plenty of rivets, so I had to order more rivets. You don't get enough in the kit. So I found a local supplier and ordered those. On my um, little throw together bench up here, I just keep all my jig, all my jig blocks. Um, what else have I got here? I made up a little 
just drilled all the holes and I used to label them so you know what size is what. So if you grab a bolt, throw it in the, throw it in the hole, you know what size drill to use. That was quick and easy and a bit of practice for, you know, whatever. Rivet, big rivet. Um, got my dipstick, use that on the cruiser. Fuel dipstick, just a wooden spoon, a couple of squares, scissors, so I'll use all these tools. Dusting pistol, rubber mallet, hammer, my fuel tank leak detector, you know, just for <coughs> heat shrink if you get lazy. <coughs> I've also got the proper heat shrink gun down in the cupboard, torch and mirror, all my pliers, they were the uh, like the fluting pliers, safety glasses, little wire cutters just for wire and zip ties maybe, uh, pliers, these are really handy, long nose pliers, some good cutters for uh, fuel tubing and that sort of thing, fire hose, fire sleeve, screwdrivers, set of allen keys, metric and imperial drill bits, Lock wire pliers, deburring tools, good set of files, Stanley knife, the um, in my wire strippers, crimpers. This is a little uh, RG58 cable for your coax for doing the aerial. Good little, good little tool that. Only use it the once. Um, good drills. My impact driver and my drill with a battery each and there was a spare battery always on charge so they never run out. I did the entire, you know, the swing spars and everything just with a DeWalt drill. These Clecos were invaluable, the little clamp type Clecos. Um, show you that. Just those sort of Clecos clamps just to hold things before you drive it in and then with the Clecos make yourself up some drums copper silver and black I'm not sure how people say how many well, that many that was like a that's a two kilo bucket of yogurt or was um, that's how many probably there's 300 of each in there um, On this side, I lashed out an A5 and an A4 rivet gun. The only difference is the tip. Um, just made it easier, easier process. And then you swap the tip, flat tip for A6 rivets, etc. Left and right hand tin snips. Uh, this tool here I covered once before. Pretty useless. Never used it. Go along the edge, causes more burrs than it gets rid of. Good set of spanners, both metric and imperial. Same on the sockets. Uh, that was a data plate that I made up for the aircraft. Screwdrivers, plenty of X-Acto blades, hacksaw blades. Uh, these were good, I made up while you're waiting for your kit to come. So I made up um, 532nd, number 20s, number 30s, 1 8th, number 40s, 332nd, and just color coded them. Just so I had a dozen drill bits ready to go. About halfway through the build, I think I ordered another dozen of each one. Um, and you get the double-ended drills as well. So you got a nice fresh drill bit when required. Also, um, a number 11 drill bit, which was for my 3 16th lay in three bolts. Step drills. Uh, get quite a few of the little step drills. One from Aircraft Spruce that has little tiny increments. I use this one for the windscreens and all the perspex work really well. After first first hitting them with a um, a burr, like a, a Dremel, one of these type of things, like a Dremel burr. Uh, yeah, the hole spacing tool they come in handy. Right angle drills. They're pretty cheap on eBay or Amazon or somewhere like that. Um, long drill bits, 12 inch drill bits, work, they work really well. Hole finders, 
Use those a couple of times on the spats, they come in real handy. Uh, magnet, use that quite a bit. Needle files, a couple of Allen keys. A shifter or crescent wrench. Um, these guys were meant to curl the edge of the, you know, the skin down a little bit. Never bothered to actually use them. Um, does make the job a little bit neater, but you can mess it up as well. My digital level straight edge with sandpaper on it and another big one metre level there as well. A couple of soldering irons, heating iron, like from model aeroplane, covering sort of heat iron, uh, Dremel tool, the permagrit tools, sanding block with all the big you know, flat files, round files, just weird and wonderful shapes come in handy. The hand riveter, on the hand riveter, I did the whole aircraft, I didn't have to modify this in any way at all. Um, so you can get the aircraft built without sort of chopping into your rivet gun. Crimping, crimping pliers and a hacksaw, and time of day. Okay guys, so out of all these tools, my number one tool would be reading glasses. Put on your reading glasses and start reading. Read the plans back to front. Get yourself some books, put your plans in. So I had all my plans, all my plans in the book. And if you can't, can't find it immediately in the plans, I can guarantee you everything on that aircraft is in, is available to you somewhere. Yeah, there's some, you know, it's missing or some indiscretions there, here and there. Um, Zenith probably need to fix up a couple of areas, but that's part of their, um, I guess their process where their manufacturing process is ahead of the plans. Um, so read your plans. Just because you're building the rudder doesn't, and you can't find the information, it might be, might be up front on the nose wheel steering section or a little note somewhere else on the left hand wing. Um, so read through your plans thoroughly, highlight things, um, I found it good to highlight where the AS5, the stainless steel rivets, are utilised, things like that. So in your plans. You've also got the construction standards from Zenith, which are pretty much gospel. So follow these, set your own, well you don't set your own standards, you just follow these standards. Don't take information off other people which will basically lead you to taking shortcuts. Just because doing it one way works better doesn't mean it's right. Stick to the standards. It might be tighter, um, but just the standards are in here. Um, the other good book, I'm in Australia, but this is an American book. Um, if you're familiar with this one, Aircraft Inspection, Repair and Alterations. This is an FAA A book. For instance, I've got this page here marked, which I know is on the, on the turnbuckles that I read up on. So rigging up the turnbuckles, and I was surprised to find, um, I'll read it here now, uh, you're a maximum of three threads out, but also a maximum of uh, four threads in. So that's your tolerance. You only got sort of seven threads there to play with. Um, so you'd be very careful when you set up your turnbuckles. But it's in black and white, it's written there. That's the standard. Same as all the basic stuff, I guess. Heads of the bolts outboard, heads of the bolts forward. Um, Outboard skin over inboard skin, do that all the time. Leading edge over trailing edge, pretty pretty basic stuff. The photo guides is another thing. Put 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 together your um, photo guides. I just put them in uh, in chapters if you like. Where is one? Firewall. So then there's all the photos of the firewall assembly. So sometimes because of the way you put them in your book, you may have to jump on the computer because I printed them out with black and white pictures may not be quite clear. You go home on your PC, on your computer, you can blow it up in colour and you might be able to see what's in the background there. Um, also, these pictures are sometimes, you know, like looking at the seat pan here, but I can also see the weldment down here. So it gives you the, inadvertently, it gives you the, the layout, if you like, for the undercarriage um, weldment where the bolts go, which you may have a question on. So it's not, you know, that's obviously in the baggage seat um, construction and then there's the bolts for the gear weldment. So you can find information in other areas if you like. So there you go, quick down and dirty. My number one tool, get some glasses if you're getting on a bit or you, you know, 
read, read up, um, enjoy your building. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Hey guys, starting on the next project. If you've been watching along and you haven't subscribed, please hit the button, it's free. Subscribe, hit the notifications. Starting on the next project, big announcement soon. Hope you enjoy this new series.